Okay, thanks for purchasing my data wall. I'm Whitney Shattuck, teacher at the First Grade Roundup, and I was just going to go over um, how to use um, my data wall from my TPT store. So if you'll look here, um, this is all on Google Drive, which is my favorite thing ever if you haven't used it before. Um, but one of the reasons why I love Google Drive is because um, you can use it from anywhere um, anywhere that you can get the internet from. So I don't have to worry about emailing files to myself. I can just use it at my home computer or my school computer and just log into my Google Drive and I don't have to worry about going back and forth. So first thing that we're going to talk about is just some basics and bear with me if you already know how to do this stuff or just skip over this part. You don't have to listen to me talk about all this. Um, so let's talk about typing info and kids names, the basics. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to type just a couple of names for you. We're going to use my name, my poor husband, my poor family members get sucked into this stuff all the time. Okay, and just so that you can see and we don't have to do a whole lot, lot of uh, scrolling, we'll just do um, six different rows. So here's my class. I've just typed them in, first and last name, however you want to do it. Obviously, this is your document, so you need to make it work for you. Okay, and then as I get data, um, I'm going to go ahead and put it in as I need to. Now, you'll notice that I have student names over here, and then I've color-coded different categories of data. So I've started with our MAP literacy um, scores, um, which is a computerized standardized assessment that we take. Ooh, that was a lot of eyes. Computerized standardized assessment um, that we take in literacy and math. I know several districts take that. Um, and we take at the beginning, the middle, and the end of the year. So I've already put those in there. So if you teach first grade and you do MAP literacy, you're in luck because I've already put the benchmark numbers in there front. Um, for you from the national um, benchmarks for MAPS. So um, once I take those MAP scores, MAP tests in September, Whitney gets a um, 167, um, but poor Justin gets a 153, and good gracious, Cooper, bless his heart, he's only three. He scored 128 on MAPS. And we'll just put in a couple of other ones. Probably ought to be good to my in-laws. Ha ha. Um, let's say poor Avery. She's a 109 because she's not even a year old yet. Okay, so I've got my data in. Um, and this is my, let's just say that this is my first point. I don't have anything else. If I, the way I prefer to do it is I like to sort it. Um into um, from lowest to highest. So I can see my most critical needs kids um, first clumped together at the top and then I can scroll to the bottom and see my extension kids at the bottom really easily. Okay, so what I'm going to do um, is I'm going to um, highlight my class and I'm going to go to data, sort, but I don't want to sort by column A because column A is my student name. I don't want them in alphabetical order unless that's how you work and you want to do that. I want them by my own range. I'm going to do it by column B because column B is where my beginning map literacy scores are. A to Z would be um, lowest to highest. Z to A would be highest to lowest. I'm going to go A to Z and I'm going to click sort. Okay, so now I have my class sorted from their lowest score to their highest score. Okay, um, one thing that I've done in the past is um, just gone through and highlighted kids that were below the benchmark. Benchmark of 160 in first grade at the beginning of the year and then I've just gone in and um, you know had highlighted them red so that I would know so I would know hey those are my kids are below and then I can quickly see how many kids I have below and on okay 
that's totally up to you um, how you want to do that. Okay. Okay, so that's just your basics of typing in the data and sorting. So let's talk about all these columns that I've got here. So I've got map literacy. Um, our, my district uses a program called Benchmark Phonics, um, and it's a purchase program that we use. If you use that, um, then you're on luck. You're already set up. We, they have an assessment called the QPA, um, which we give about every other month during the school year. If you don't, have um, this, but you have some other phonics assessment that you want to do, then go ahead and just retype the header for that. If you do it, um, if you don't do it every single month, don't worry about it. Take out what you don't need. Okay? So if you only do that, let's say, three times a year, and you just want to do beginning, middle, and end, then you can type in those three, and then I'm going to come up here and highlight my two columns. And then I'm going to delete those columns. Okay? And then I'm good to go. And holy moly, that made it taller. And I'm a little OCD about that. And I like, don't really want it to be taller. So I'm just going to shrink my font. And there we go. Okay? So I can do that if I want to. The other option that I have is um, if I want to... Um, test my QPA or whatever my other assessment is more than once during the year I can go or more than five times during the year I can just insert a column and I don't think I talked about that because I was too busy talking about something else so I would just highlight a column in that category right click insert one to the left or insert one to the right okay if I don't care about assessing phonics at all don't want to do that, don't want to track that data, then you can always delete that completely, okay, by right-clicking delete, or um, I can highlight those if I think, don't want to do it right now, but maybe at some point I'll do that. I just don't want to see that because I ain't got time for that, as we might say in Arkansas. Then I would right-click, highlight those, right-click, hide columns E through I. Okay, and then I'll hide it, and then whenever I decide, hey, remember that really cool phonics thing, I think I've got time for that now? Then I can go up here, notice I'm out of A, B, C order now. I'll go A, B, C, D, J. That's because I've hidden some columns. And you'll also notice these little arrows right here. If I click on those, bam, there you go. It's back, okay? I've organized this by literacy first, um, and I tried to do maps first because I felt like um, that's where I would I want to sort my data first. Of course, you could sort it by anything, but I've got maps, literacy, then phonics, reading, spelling. I've got dibbles um, over here, which with all of the dibbles assessments for first grade, for beginning, middle, and end. And then we switch over to math. I've got the map, math scores. I've got um, with the benchmark scores for first grade. I've got fact fluency addition um, and fact fluency subtraction. And um, I've got some documents in my store um, for assessing those as well. I've got a math quarterly assessment um, for those that you can use. Um, if you need something or if you have something different for math, you can always put it there. I also have in my math assessment packet in my store, I have um, a math quarterly data spreadsheet very similar that breaks it down by skill. Um, what skills the kids are missing or what skills they have. Um, it's the same, very similar document, but it's just a little more expanded for math. Um, the reason I didn't put that on this document is um, I, the data wall for me is just something that's an overarching um, um, document, not so specific. If I want to get specific on what skills I need in math, then I'll use my uh, map quarterly data on my map quarterly assessments packet in my store. 
Okay, so we've talked about um, some of the basics, inserting and deleting columns, um, editing your headers. You can change these to say whatever you want them to say. Also, if you test your reading level but you have different standards than my district does, that's fine. If your standard is a level C, not a D in August, then go up here and click, I chose that cell, and then I went up here to this white bar, and where it says D, I'm just going to backspace and type in C and click enter and look it doesn't look nice anymore which is fabulous because now I can show you that all you need to do to fix that is click on this cell go right up here in between August and C and just make a space a couple spaces till I'm past this line right here and I know it'll go to the next line and then I'm gonna click enter and voila okay Okay, so if you'll notice over here in this corner, I've got Tier 1, Tier 2, Tier 3. This was super helpful for me this year um, during our PLC. During our um, PLC meetings, I would bring this data wall um, on my computer, just bring my computer um, so I could talk to our um, RTI team about my kiddos. So let's say each school has their different criteria for who's Tier 1, Tier 2, and Tier 3. So let's say that um, I'm only looking at map scores for Tier 2. You bomb the map test, you're automatically a Tier 2 kid. So if I want, that would be Avery and Cooper and poor Justin are going to be Tier 2 kiddos. So I'm going to highlight those rows. I'm going to click over here in the gray area of the numbered row. And I'm going to highlight, click and drag what I want to highlight. And then I'm going to go over here. Um, to the A, to the font color, and I'm going to change that to orange, okay? And then everything across the row is going to be orange. And I really liked this because it just made it very easy for me to find my Tier 2 kiddos right away and look at their data, okay? Um, whenever a kid moved into Tier 3, um, for whatever criteria that is that your district or your school has, then I went up to my font color again, and I just changed that to red. And that made it very easy to, for me to say, okay, I have one tier three kiddo, I have two tier two, and the rest are tier one kiddos. Okay? Um, obviously, none of these things I'm not going to make you do any of this stuff. I'm not the teacher police over here. This is all for your benefit. I just want to wanted to go over a few things that were available for you and different things that you could do if you wanted to. What am I trying to do here? I'm trying to go back to black. There we go. Highlight and back to my black color. Okay. Um, let's talk about printing. Whenever I'm ready to print, because this is a long, long document. Okay. Also, you'll notice whenever I'm scrolling that this is staying the same. It's because I've frozen those for you um, so that they'll be easy to read. I've also frozen this line right here so that if I scroll up and need to go down and add some more kids, I don't have to be I don't have to scroll back and forth to see what my headers are. So hopefully that's helpful to you. Um, also, you're not obviously I should have talked about this in the beginning. You're not going to keep teacher names data wall. Nobody. Um, has the name teacher's name. So if this was mine, I would be typing in Mrs. Shaddix data wall. And then over school year, I would type 2016-2017. Okay? Alright. Sorry, I'm kind of bird walking there. But back to printing. Um, and we're going to go quickly. I'm going to go file, print. Okay, I'm going to print the current sheet. I'm going to print it landscape and I want to print, I want to fit it to the width. I don't want to do it the actual size. Um, I guess you could. It would just go across a couple of pages, um, which would be a little bit harder to read. I prefer to do it landscape. If you keep it actual size, it will keep it the same size though. Then I'm going to go to print. And sometime today, it's going to print that for me. There we go. Okay. I'm not going to actually print this, but it will print it all on one page for you. It will be smaller, um, so you might have to pull out those glasses, but it should be um, just fine for you. Then I can save this as a PDF and print um, from there. Okay. Last thing I want to show you. You do have the capability to download this as Microsoft Excel. 
but it will change um, your fonts and a little bit of your formatting. So hope you love this document. If you have any questions for me or anything else I can answer, then you can shoot me an email, thefirstgraderoundup at gmail.com. Thanks.